You're all here so early. Looks like we have everyone here. Isak, are you sure you want to come with us? I'll watch from a safe distance. Dia, I want to be there to bring Grandpa home. Okay, let's go then. Dia, wait. What's the matter? I heard that you were quite reckless yesterday. No more of that today, understood? Or I'll be very upset with you. <sighs> Fine. They got here before us. Uh-oh. Is it because Paimon overslept by five minutes and held everyone up? Is everything ready? Absolutely. Although... You brought fewer people than I imagined. Bring him over. Grandpa! Raman? I've always thought of you as a man of his word. What's this about? It's a one-for-one one exchange. Sounds fair, don't you think? Or let me put it this way. Agreeing to any kind of deal with the Dendro Archon's people is already a huge compromise on my part. Don't you think you've asked enough? Uh-uh. <sighs> you stay right there! Shaking. Wait a second. It's a earthquake. This day's going just great. <laughs> what a nuisance. The sand dune collapsed. I saw an energy field. The village keeper protected us. It glowed green with Tentro. <laughs> just like you said, it may well have been the remains of Lesser Lord Kusanali's power inside the scholar's body. The Dendro Archon. The present one. Grandpa? Grandpa? Oh no, he's getting confused again. Hey, look around you. Did there used to be a temple here? It seems that when the sand dune collapsed, it exposed these underground structures. The symbols on the gate belong to the Scarlet King's civilization. This structure must be ancient. Over time, the sandstorms completely buried it and left it in the state we see now. It could have been an underground palace in the distant past. Oh, a miracle. Praise the Scarlet King! What's he doing here? And his men too? They must have fallen down here with us. Pretty lucky if you ask me. Most of them seem in really bad shape, except for him. 
he got off lightly. <laughs> Mind your head. No, no, this isn't the time for conflict. Our exalted lord has shown us the way to his sacred palace. Uh, he's not actually gonna go in there, is he? As it happens, I want to take a look inside too. What are you doing? Don't you think it's curious? One minute, Lesser Lord Kusanali's power protects us from harm, and the next, remnants of the Scarlet King's civilization appear. Two major deities are vying to showcase their power to us. It would be a shame not to witness them both. Paimon thought you weren't interested in gods! Indeed. In my view, gods are just a higher form of living being. Or creature, you could say. New discoveries are always worth investigating. Whether they have anything to do with gods is neither here nor there. Raman, what are you gonna do about your men? I'll just let them lay here. The Scarlet King will take care of his people. Right now, I'm going inside. It's full of life here. This defies comprehension. It looked completely desolate from the outside. Yet, it flows with energy inside. Yeah! And there's so many plants! It's so pretty! Sir Rahman. What? Huh? Me? <laughs> Do you see another Rahman here? Are you mocking me? What do you mean, sir? Interpret it however you want. But there's something I'd like to draw your attention to. While this structure is clearly left over from the Scarlet King civilization, the energy that flows in here is that of the Dendro Archon. <sighs> Whatever you say, it's not like I have a vision. There's nothing to be angry about. Think of this as an academic journey. It does seem kind of strange. If that's true, then we might have to explore this whole area to find an explanation. Solidify! Now you shall perish!
have order. Yeah, sure. of Adepti tricks. There is no escape! Solidify! Divine Providence of the Scarlet King! Wait. What's that? A load of flowers! And it looks like there's something among them. Oh, these are Scarlet King runes. They left something behind. Hmm. Yes. It's an elegy written in an ancient script. What does it say? Here lies our faithful priest Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. You can read ancient Scarlet King script? Of course. Every student needs to master at least 20 languages before they graduate. He's not serious, right? There's still something off about this place. The elemental energy here is too concentrated. The scent of life. Is it trying to tell us something? Hmm. Is this it? Analyzing. Hmm. There seems to be a hidden message among these skeletal remains. Excellent. There's a device from the Scarlet King's civilization in this gravesite. I'll transmit the information over and project it for everyone to see. Isn't sharing knowledge against the Academia's rules? Yes. However, under the circumstances, I'd prefer you to see this for yourself. You'll understand after watching it. Civilization is born of knowledge, but so too can knowledge be its demise. A disaster caught us unaware. It was knowledge that did not belong to this world. The Scarlet King brought this forbidden knowledge into our world, and it quickly spread like a plague. People's minds were filled with crazed whispers, Dark gray scales spread across their bodies. Even the land was stripped of its vigor. Only a desperate, deathly silence remained. 
Were it not for Greater Lord Ruka Devata from the forests, the damage would have been irreversible. She summoned the priests to build temples and infused into them the divine power of life. The disaster was miraculously tempered, and the embers of our civilization were preserved in Aru village. Alas, the miracle could not last. As long as forbidden knowledge continued to exist, it would forever blight this world. In the end, the proud king of the desert, my eternal lord, chose to sacrifice himself. I have spent my whole life since guarding one of these many temples. But now, my duty is coming to an end. As I close my eyes for the final time, the sight of that noble deity will appear in my vision once more. In helping the Scarlet King to eradicate forbidden knowledge, she exhausted her strength, and her form became that of a small child. How strange. Now that I think of her, I no longer have any fear of death, for I sense that the spirit of life will abide with me during my eternal sleep. Children of the desert, cling no longer to past grievances, but hold tight to the memory of this act of benevolence. What was that? The priest's memories. No. No! Impossible! Greater Lord Rukadevata. So the former Dendro Archon and the Scarlet King were never enemies at all. Uh, but this doesn't make any sense. The Dendro Archon's followers, they're clearly... Was that the former Dendro Archon? He became so tiny in the end. You might be distrustful of the Akasha, but there's no reason for you to doubt the Scarlet King's technology. You've just witnessed his priest's last words. I've never heard about any of this before. The surviving followers of the Scarlet King all gathered in Aru village. Our god did not make mistakes. We refused to believe any of the rumors. The Scarlet King's death, the all but total annihilation of our civilization. It was all Greater Lord Ruka Devata's doing. We saw her as nothing more than a traitor. Who stabbed us in the back in our moment of crisis. <laughs> Just like us humans, fighting, feuding, double-crossing each other to survive in the desert. You were blinded by your prejudice. <laughs> if I hadn't seen this for myself, if I hadn't witnessed his last words with my own eyes, ears, and heart, how could I ever begin to accept this? The truth is so far from what I've always known. Am I really supposed to believe that after all these years, all this time seeking revenge, suddenly now my enemy is my savior? Raman, that's enough. Give it a rest. You're starting to make a fool of yourself. <laughs> Dia, tell me. My Aramites and I, what are we even fighting for? Hey, how you doing? Eh, I'll live. <laughs> Thanks. I should probably go. Can't just stay here forever. What's your next move gonna be? 
Oh, I know what you're going to ask. I feel deeply ashamed of everything I've done. You'll get everything you're asking for. But please, uh, give me some time. After everything that's happened here today, somehow I need to explain it to the others. It's not gonna be easy. Well, I guess that's for me to deal with. Dia, this is where our camp's located. Make a note of it. When would be a good time for us to go? Tomorrow. I'll convince everyone that we're all on the same side. And I'll return every last one of your mad... Uh, sorry, your village keepers. We'll share our other resources with you, too. You seem to finally understand that our true enemy is the Sages. Yes. The gods never gave up on anyone. It's the people responsible for all this that need to face the consequences of their actions. That must have been rough. But he seems to have figured things out now. <sighs> Rahman's no fool. Being the leader of your own faction in the desert is no easy feat. It's too bad he was held back by his belief in the Scarlet King. But now that that's changed, I guess we have a few more people on our side. The outcome, at least, is favorable. We should get going, too. Let's head back, have a proper meal, and a nice... long sleep. We'll need all our energy tomorrow. Hmm. Sino, we're leaving! Stop yelling. Rahman, we're here. Everything's been arranged. Someone will bring the village keepers back to Aru village shortly. I guess all I can say now is, thanks for agreeing to help. Ah, don't mention it. I think we can both agree you went to hell and back for it. But we share a common cause now. From here on out, we're allies. Where are the perpetrators? I'll bring you to them. Follow me. So these are the people who kidnapped the village keepers. Oh no, it's the scribe! There's no need to yell. No one can help you now. We've been all over the desert trying to find you! That's right. General Mahamatra? No, no. Make it quick, please. Swift and painless. Whoa. 
The moment they set eyes on Sino, they turned pale like they've seen a ghost! You should have known that I would be coming for you. Wait, we were just following orders! You know what I'm talking about, right? There's no way we could have done all this by ourselves! No, not Sino! He's gonna tear us limb from limb! I could do worse. Please have mercy! Start talking. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to... other methods. So, your superiors have kept you quite busy recently. Why? What are they trying to accomplish? Uh, they, um, wanted to extract canned knowledge. Don't play dumb. You know what I'm really asking. They extract divine canned knowledge. Then what? I... I, I don't really don't know how to explain it. Well, you better start talking or you'll be sorry! You don't want to make things any more difficult for yourself, do ya? Be my guest. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. That sure didn't sound like a fancy metaphor or anything. You're serious, aren't you? How did you know? There's no use hiding it now. Yes, you're right. The Academia is working on an important and potentially world-changing project. They are creating a new god. A god that will belong to them and to the people of Sumeru. It may seem as if Sumeru's academics are thriving, but ever since the death of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, scholarly breakthroughs have been few and far between. The withering of Ermin's soul has been getting worse recently. The sages have tried everything they could think of, but nothing's worked. I'm always hearing them say things like, if only Greater Lord Ruka Devata was still with us. Continue. And then, someone from the Fatui showed up. They called him the Doctor. He brought a, a... a Gnosis, and said he wanted to borrow the Academia's research facilities. The Doctor was previously expelled from the Academia. At first, the Sages looked down at him in disdain. But when he said those words, everyone's expression changed. He asked them, Do you wish to create a god? This is what the arrogant ignorance at the extreme end of Academia looks like. First, the Academia spent a long time constructing a divine vessel, which was based on an exquisite humanoid puppet. After that, they harvested dreams via the Sebzerus Festival Samsara, maximizing the Akasha's output. With the Doctor's help, and the Akasha now functioning at maximum efficiency, they were able to use it to extract the power from the Gnosis and convert it into a divine core. Next, they decided that their new god needed to possess divine wisdom. For that to happen, they needed a huge quantity of divine canned knowledge. It adds up. But how do you determine whether the knowledge extracted is of divine origin? Call it an educated guess? The Academia has been trying to figure out the exact source of the Scholar's Madness for centuries, but to no avail. Nobody can explain the cause of this phenomenon. Uh, surely you can see what that implies, Scribe Al-Haytham. If it's knowledge no mortal can comprehend, then it must be something only gods are able to decipher. In other words, it's the source of the God of Wisdom's omniscience and omnipotence. Hmm... You must have noticed by now. The Academia doesn't care about who their God is. It's the ability to exercise control over knowledge and wisdom that matters. It is as if they are cursed with a desire for omniscience and omnipotence that burns in their blood. Some organisms demonstrate phototaxis, and thus orient their entire lives in respect to sources of light. For the sages, their only source of hope is the existence of a deity who embodies the acme of wisdom. This is but a form of phototaxis. For many scholars, the absence of a god of wisdom means stumbling in the darkness for the duration of their lives. Then what does Lesser Lord Kusanali mean to you? Is she not a true god present in this world? If you already have a new god, 
Why try to create another one? From the beginning, the Academia has never treated her as a god. When the Academia first discovered Lesser Lord Kusanali, the newborn god of wisdom, the sages hoped that she would be as wise as Greater Lord Ruka Devada. But upon evaluation, they found that at the time, she possessed no more intelligence than any ordinary human child. The sages never had a ruder awakening. This forced them to accept that Greater Lord Ruka Devada had indeed passed away. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali's Gnosis had been used to power the Akasha this entire time. By herself, she has neither an Archon's raw power, nor the spectacular insight expected of a god of wisdom. Slowly but surely, people began to forget about her existence. So... This is the path the sages have chosen. All right, let's try to keep our cool. If everyone's in a bad mood, then let's change up our scenery. Raman, give me a few men to help us escort the village keepers back to the village. And these two scholars, they're coming too. Sure, as you wish. The village keepers you found have all been returned to their homes, and each one has a dedicated caregiver to look after them. The two new scholars are being kept under close supervision, too. <laughs> really great work, everyone. Uh, the atmosphere is so heavy. Is there nothing left to talk about? In that case, let's all get some water and try to think about something else. Or I can go fetch some snacks. Oh, Paimon's so coming with you! Do you have any plans, Traveler? Gods above, you're not talking about work, are you? Hmm. So you were still withholding some information? firsthand, it still feels super surreal to hear you talk about it again. What a whirlwind of a story. I felt like I was holding my breath the whole time. It seems like there will be more issues to face in the days ahead than I had anticipated. Hmm. Still, now's a good time to make our next move. Now that Raman's joined us, we'll be an even stronger team. It's time to make a plan. Indeed. These events are a flagrant transgression of the rules in every sense. We cannot allow it to continue. So, everyone, are we on the same page? Crush the sages and rescue our god. That is our ultimate goal. Well, let's brainstorm a little more about what other resources we can draw on. The next time we gather here, we must have a solid plan. Yep, it'll work out for sure.
don't rush. This is a big undertaking, and the planning and preparation for what lies ahead will no doubt take some time. Take it slowly. We need to make sure the plan is as effective as possible. <sighs> He's starting to read his book again. Hey, are you even listening? Would you like me to lend you something to read? No way! Your books aren't quite to Paimon's tastes. I was joking. I know my books are far too difficult for you, and I have no intention of lending them out. Ugh, you're so annoying! You must let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Though I cannot leave Avru Village, I can't help but feel... stirred when I see the looks in your eyes. I've never felt as roused as this when fighting alone in the past. I suppose this must be the power of camaraderie. In the past, I never imagined that even the gods could suffer from hardship. If we can find a way to change all of this, will this nation become a better place? The past few days have been some of the most challenging work I've ever taken on. And none of it'll learn me a single Mora. <laughs> I can't believe it. Look on the bright side, Dia. Maybe we'll get a huge reward after this is all over. Hmm, you've got a point. Hey, what would you do if you woke up tomorrow with more money than you could ever spend? Paimon would buy boatloads of tasty snacks. That's it? Um, and maybe some tasty drinks as well? <laughs> How adorable. Well, here's to all our indulgent fantasies. If there's a chance they can come true, I'll give it my best shot. And here's hoping that everything we do from now on will change this world for the better. Girl. Oh yeah.